to see this sort of facility and uh, the objectives that Marwell now has makes me very proud that we have this partnership. We are in education and research, but there are complementarities and overlaps which make this a very exciting partnership. Public understanding of science, working in areas of conservation and understanding, and enabling work to continue that will give both organisations opportunities to progress and to make our marks. And that's what universities are about, which is bringing together the uh, very creative people that we have, the research that we do, and enabling the next generation of students to uh, understand the things that our researchers are doing and to learn from it and eventually to carry on doing it themselves for the next generation. The overall aim of this facility is to try and investigate the roots of social communication. So we know that animals use different behaviours all the time when they're interacting with each other and some of these are communicative so they transmit information. And so we want to understand a bit more about how that works, like what do they mean to these animals, how do they interpret these particular social behaviours like facial expressions, vocalisations, body postures, how do they use them and what do they mean to them. Humans use social communication all the time. We don't just communicate with language, we communicate with our faces, with our hands, with our bodies. And these are clearly really important skills that have evolved. And in order to understand this, we can't just look at humans. We need to look at other species and see what they're doing and compare it to humans. The other important factor about this facility is that we're looking at a very rare species and so there aren't very many of these animals left in the wild so it's very important that we understand as much as we can about them to help improve their captive environments and to improve conservation efforts. This is also a very special project because we're working closely with Marwell Wildlife um, and we're able to work with their animals um, in this, this special facility that we've built, we've trained monkeys to use touchscreens and we can run studies seeing how they match certain signals, seeing how they interpret them, what do they mean to them, which is something that you can't do if you're doing observational studies alone, if you're just watching them and recording their behaviour. This allows us to have a, an additional window into their psychology. So one of the tasks that we ask the monkey to complete is to try to match a specific sound with the facial expression that goes with it. So basically when they communicate with each other, they combine um, acoustic and visual signals, just like when humans talk, you know, they move their hands and they smile, and there's not only the language, it's the whole body plus the language. And the uh, monkeys do the same, so we are interested in trying to understand a little bit better how do they combine these different signals. The monkeys come uh, through these little cat flaps, and they just come whenever they want and they leave whenever they want. Usually they are quite happy to take part in the study. Um, they come in and sit down when everything is ready. We start the trials and they, they are quite happy to um, interact with the touchscreen. And they get um, some small piece of, uh, of food every time they, they make the right uh, choice. So that's what we call the positive reinforcement. The touchscreen is uh, linked to the laptop computer where the program is running and then we have a camera box inside there which is the view is displayed on the screen there for the public to see what's going on and at all time they can see what the monkeys are doing. The task that we're training them on is basically like a game of snap. So we present them with an image and then we present them with two other images and we see which one they match it to. So if we present them with a facial expression, we might want to know is this a positive facial expression or a negative facial expression. And so this helps us work out if they see certain facial expressions in a positive way, like human smiling, or if they see facial expressions in a negative way, like we might see frowns or angry faces. The benefit of working with animals in a zoological park is that you can conduct studies that you wouldn't be able to do in the field, so the two approaches are really complementary rather than mutually exclusive. Um, for example, you, you can't imagine bringing a touchscreen in the wild and asking them to match several stimuli. There are other, other things that you can do in the wild that you can't do here, and the opposite is true as well. All the work that we do here is on direct public view, so visitors to the park can come and see us when we're working with the animals and they can see what the animals are capable of and they can understand primatology and understand the psychology of, of primates in particular these this species at a level that they wouldn't see otherwise and so we often hear about projects that people are 
are doing with, with primates and, and we learn about the amazing things they're capable of, but here people can actually see it, which we think provides people with a really good opportunity to, to see science in action.